Hey, welcome. It's another throne room voice series. Always, this has just been so fun to uh, listen to some amazing people. And when I mean throne room voices, I mean those people who they've been in the throne room, been, they've been near his heart, no matter what's going on in their life. They've been close and listening. I want to introduce my guest to you, who has really been just one of those gems. And Grace Morrison, say hello, Grace. Hi, everyone. <laughs> awesome. Hi, Teresa. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes. Grace is, uh, go ahead and tell me just a little bit about what you do and who you are as far as your the voice coach thing. Well, I have a studio uh, called Grace Note Worship Studios, and I mentor and train worship leaders. And uh, I'm a mom also, as you can hear. <laughs> and, Yay, um, moms! And I have just released my first online uh, course for that, which has been amazing. And, um, and I've been a worship leader for, I don't want to tell you how long, over two decades. Awesome. And uh, because I started when I was born. <laughs> I love it. So, so you know, yeah. The, and, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just get excited because Grace is one of those friends. It's okay if you got kids. This is life. I mean, if, if my life's going on, you're going to hear the kitchen with Dave in there. <laughs> Grace was one of those friends that where I was praying Psalm 15 for the right kind of friends. And our friendship started with her DMing me at Instagram. So, and now full circle. I love you, kid. It's, a, it's a, that's okay. If he wants to share, probably he wants to sing his soul face scale. My three year old, oh, bless him. Do re mi fa so. Oh, love it. <laughs> hey, buddy, good to see you. Oh, but I'm you. just saying that to say, you know, I, uh, you God can uh, God could bridge the gap and bring friends to you. And I think just the heart of praying. It opens the door. So I just wanted to say that because that's such a huge thing. Grace, we have been connected. I have gone, I'm going through her voice camp. I was doing my exercises before I uh, came on. Grace, share like you shared with me earlier how we're talking that this is Redeem Your Voice camp. This is a pre launch of that camp where we're talking about trauma. We're talking about your voice. But I think Grace can talk about not only your voice and her identity, she can also talk your voice literally. What was one of the things you shared with me about voice and in relation to trauma? Well, trauma is a unique experience. Well, it's not unique. It's actually ubiquitous. We all experience trauma, um, but it's unique in the way that the body processes it. We think of trauma as uh, either emotional or physical, and the reality is it's everything. If you have physical trauma, it's emotionally traumatic. If you have emotional trauma, it is also physically traumatic. And specifically in regard to the voice, if you experience um, tremendous amount of trauma, especially in childhood, very often the voice will slow development and sometimes it will not fully mature. And uh, because the tension, the body is holding tension in these muscles and holding tension all over really. Um, wow. And it, it inhibits the full use of the instrument. And you can experience emotional trauma um, at any stage of life and it affects your voice. And it wow. creates tension that causes other issues. It's a, it's a big long um, web of issues that can develop. Uh, and you can learn how to heal that. And some of vocal training is processing through those traumas and receiving wow. healing. Share about uh, the breath. What's just phenomenal to me when you talk about the breath is how it intertwines really. I mean, I'm sure if you're a vocal coach and it was, you know, non-religious or whatever, but it literally connects the breath i want you to share about that it literally connects i think who you are in your dna and i really believe who you are in your dna ends up 
your voice, and your identity. Will you share that? Sure. Well, I have a phrase that I say over and over and over to all of my clients, and it is this. The voice is the breath, and the breath is the voice. You can't focus on the voice and ignore your breathing. You can't focus on your breathing and ignore your voice. There's no autopilot zone for healthy singing or speaking. It's all an intentional marriage of the two. And, wow. um, and in order to use the voice properly, you have to find the place in your breathing where you are at rest physically, physically at rest. Um, I talk to women and often women, maybe not so much anymore, I don't know, we've been liberated from a lot of stuff, but oftentimes women are told to suck in their stomachs all the time. Uh, yeah. Because obviously- My mother, wants <laughs> my mother. <laughs> yeah, yep. mine too. Okay. And, uh, and my grandmother. and. Um, and what happens is you're putting trauma on the body. You're creating trauma and you're restricting the breath. Now, I'll tell you personally, my grandmother used only a portion of her voice for her entire life. And the wow. reason she did is she told me if I use my full voice, I don't sound genteel and it's not ladylike. <laughs> so she was trained that in order to be ladylike, she needed to sound weaker than she was, wow. uh, which is such a distortion of truth and just really speaks to that identity thing that you talk about yeah. a lot. And um, so, in order to use the voice properly, you're going to have to find the full resting place so that your diaphragm, yeah. everything is in alignment and your diaphragm is able to fully expand. And then you learn how to employ that breath and produce the sound that you want to and that you're capable Amazing. of doing. You know, when you first told me about the breath and then you said the voice comes from here, it's made me realign my thoughts not just for my voice but where is the resting place for my voice am i being like i'm doing pretty good right now and i don't feel like i'm strained doing a good job. i don't know if i i did do no, some you're exercises. doing you're doing a great job yeah you're doing see a great my job. voice just to, to say share my voice got really thin if you listen to last night's broadcast i think it was thin and I was like, whoa, Lord, you've called me to, to speak, to help people find their voice and share their voice and market their voice. What's going on? Well, this has been a very traumatic year, starting out with falling downstairs. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Yeah, hitting myself. Uh, so, and then a number of things have been very traumatic. So I feel like I'm coming around the circle and realizing that I'm growing through exercises in your voice. But this is what I want people to realize, Grace. I believe that resting place, literally, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be uh, added to you. Hebrews 11.11, 11, that Sarah's faith rested in the one who made the promises. I think it goes coincide, I think it coincides with your actual voice. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, one of my favorite verses that I um, deliver to my clients is Hebrews 4, 11, which says, if you're going to labor, then labor, therefore, to enter into this rest and the resting place. It's talking about faith, which is what you just referred to with Sarah's yeah. story. And, um, and when you're in faith, you're at rest because you're not taking responsibility for the stuff you have no response, no business taking responsibility for. You're not God. I'm not God. Mm, I'm yeah. not Holy Spirit. And we don't um, we don't do the things that the world does to try to make things happen. We don't need to strive, compete and manipulate. We need to follow the one who has it all worked out and has ordered our steps and planned out our ways and has written in his book, the beginning and the end of our days. So we work then to find that place of trust, that place of yes. resting. And that's such a pivotal thing about what we do at the Redeem Your Voice Camp. Uh, if you're just joining us, we have a series that has everything to do 
with your emotions and it is free it's called three keys to find your voice when your emotions scream shut up so often our emotions are start to uh, dictate or we get triggered by our emotions and as dave shared last night so often we have to rem our identity as we line up with it our true who truly who we are then when the lies come in we're able to wait a minute that's a lie i'm what's the saying in the word i'm not going to uh have coffee and tea and pour hot weather over that lie i'm going to cancel its agreement in my life and uh we help the ladies at the kingdom mentor academy at the redeem your voice camp very heavy on declarations at redeemyourvoice.com is the three video series you get to video three and you'll realize using your voice and the declarations grace i believe even as you use your voices like that in declaration i believe it can literally penetrate the cells in your body and 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 pe penetrate your voice this is where i used to speak i'm trying to sh not speak from there but what do you think absolutely and i love a story that paul young cho uh gave paul young cho is the pastor of i believe still the world's largest church in seoul korea and his entire church grew on one thing prayer <laughs> they wow. just prayed and um and the stories that have come out of there for decades are just absolutely phenomenal and he was speaking to one of the key um uh, surgeons in seoul korea and he said i want to tell you something um that we've just discovered he's talking the surgeon is talking to uh paul young Cho, and he says we have discovered that the tongue your voice controls your entire body. Every cell in your body responds to your voice. So if something is wrong in your foot, your voice actually, your foot will respond to your voice. And, wow. um, and Paul says, oh, that's not news to me. I've known that a long time. He said, what do you mean? We have just now, the scientists have just released the research on this. And he said, no, 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 no. In the book of James, in the Bible, it says the tongue is a small member, but it controls the entire body. So that yeah, so I think it's, I think it's so pretty good. significant. And a lot of people uh, come to the academy. A lot of times they come through uh, the Vine Dresser words, either on Facebook or on Instagram. And I think if you, if I think of that's like the Vine Dresser, the Father talking through me. I think of the way that 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 voice goes out in my heart and into paper. But I think there's a place where it's like, use your voice. This is, I'm the voice of the Father, but I'm talking to you, so use your voice. And what's really been fun, yeah, I would say fun, is when we help the ladies, we have this saying, uh, Grace, we call it GRIT, Generals Releasing Identity Truths. Granted, we know you can release identity truths by how you walk, but releasing releasing the 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 keys of who they are able to release that to their friends they really become that true grit of generals releasing they learn the breath and the voice of god through their own healing often it comes from their own healing of trauma mm -hmm. of the orphan spirit of mm -hmm. just fear, unforgiveness. I mean, all these topics that we talk about. And it's really interesting. We talked about a lot of them last year, Grace. Uh, and then we came up to the pandemic and how many of them's like, oh yeah, I remembered we, we had to have declarations. They're using what they've learned to fight, to come from a place of victory, but really going forward with the midst of everything going on. Um, if someone was let me just think of this. If someone was struggling, let's say a mom, and they don't feel like their voice is commanding enough, or someone in the marketplace at work, they just don't feel like their voice is strong enough. Teresa, who's struggling to keep her voice at a lower level, what would be like the beginning point? And how does that tie in again with your identity? Okay. Before Jesus went out into ministry, 
He was released into ministry after he was baptized by John. And when John baptized him, the Bible says the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove. And the dove represents that tangible, physical, indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, the Bible refers refers to the Holy Spirit as the Ruach HaKadosh. And I'm not a Hebrew scholar. I'm not great at speaking Hebrew. So that's the best I can do there. Don't judge me for that. But generally speaking, that's sort of how it sounds. I'm sure it could have a little bit more (laughs) because it's Hebrew. But that word literally means the breath of God. And when God created Adam in the beginning, Jesus being the second Adam and Adam being the first, even in the very beginning, God breathed into man and he became a living creature. And so when we begin, we begin by finding the breath. We begin by finding and locating the breath. Then we learn how to release the breath. And Jesus released the breath this way. He says, I only do what I hear, what I see my father doing. I only say what I hear my father saying. And when we find that place, like you talked about in the vine, um, then it becomes a natural outflow of actually who we were created to be. And we come back full circle to our original design in God's master plan for our lives. Wow. You know, as you were speaking, I used to say this, and I had no basis, no Grace Morrison in my life to base this, but I I would always share how your voice moves in the heavens and how God can speak through you. This is what I would say. It was like I called it, or at least as I was praying, I called it the hum of heaven. By Ooh. Grace's voice, I know it just rings in heaven. Whoosh. Wow. But listen, so he's like, what's the hum of heaven? Well, ultimately, it is the, the the full DNA of who you are, as we talk about, your identity. But the hum of heaven, think of it. This is how God showed me how, how to relate to this. He said, Teresa, when you get up in the morning to have that coffee, I sleep all night so I can have a cup of coffee. When you get up in the morning and you're, you get that cup of coffee and you sit in your favorite place and you take that first sip, what do you do? I go, hmm. He said, that's the hum of heaven because it represents, I mean, he's using coffee, okay? I mean, if you're not a coffee drinker, you might not get to that. But he says, that's your soul uniting with your spirit and coming into union and that hum like coffee, it doesn't have to be over coffee, that represents your voice, how you can align your voice to heaven. We're real big on that. How do, what do you do? Do you align your voice to what? Do you align your voice to the heaven, meaning you align your voice to what God says about you? And then when you do, when you do that kind of aligning, then no matter what you hear, news, you just realign. What does God say? Another word is getting in agreement with heaven. Once again, I love that thought. You can get in agreement with some real negative things. And I have this picture where you set up to a table, we'll say tea, and you got the tea and they pour, you pour the hot water with, with the wrong things. And you just, you sit there and you're just soaking in the negativity. When, when it's not just realigning, it's, there's, a, there's something you do with that. I remember when God was sharing this to me, he said, cancel the assignment. So I'd go around the room, all the house, cancel the assignment, cancel the assignment. And I'm like, God, what's the key to cancel the assignment? It's great saying this, but, and then he shared, you cancel the assignment by realigning your vision to what God says, your identity to heaven, because your voice rings out in heaven. You make those declarations, Teresa, and you find that place of abiding. No strive, simply abide. That place of, when I mean not striving, it's like you just, on a good day, I do well to maintain me. You, yes, you read the word. You you find voices that align with God for you. Not every voice is going to align, 
but you find those voices. And if you're ultimately looking for them, then you just ask, like I was asking God for friends, just pray, say, God, this is what I need. Help me, help me find the right alignments. Lord, help me make those declarations so I can speak life over myself. Okay. As a vocal coach, but yet you're not just a vocal coach. I know you've got some great preaching inside of you. How do you mingle both of them? I mean, is it just like an extension of your relationship with God, with your voice and teaching about your voice? It actually is. Um, you know, I went to school, uh, to college, and, uh, and I started out as a music major. Um, I started taking music lessons when I was four. So I've been music. I've been a musical family. It's been music, 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 music since I was four years old. Knew I could sing for the first time at three. And, um, and so I developed that gift. And, and about three years into my college career, I was burnt out on music. I'd been studying music for 20 years at that point. And my heart's cry was to use the gift that God had given me as a gateway to share the gospel. And I was so hungry to build that side of my assignment and my gifting. And so I switched majors as the, at the second semester of my junior year, which I don't recommend. But uh, it did take a little bit longer to get out of there. But I ended up getting a degree in biblical studies and philosophy with a music performance minor, believe it or not. And um, so um, so it's been a desire of mine that music would be a gateway for people to hear the good news of Jesus. And that it would be something that, you know, the Bible says your gift makes room for you and yeah. will bring you before kings. And um, and so it's it's really something that gets me in the door. And then my heart is to see people come into their correct alignment and to know the glorious father, like Ephesians 1 That's 17 so says. And so it sort of flows. It it's it's like it's a streams. You know, I have lots of streams that go into the river, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but so it's good. all about the river. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's so good. I think uh, when I think what you're talking about is something that we've been sharing a lot. It's uh, it's a rest to run. Is that is that? I mean, have you heard? You've heard me talk about the rest to run. Can I, can I share that if this is in line yes. kind of with what yes. you're saying? It's like uh, Hebrews 11, verse 11, I mentioned it briefly. But it has to do with Sarah, who was unable to conceive. So in the very first, it says, Sarah's faith embraced the miracle working power of God. This is the rest. So I want you to think about this. I, I want you to take this in. This might be your word right now during the pandemic to rest to run. So her faith rested in the miracle working power of God. She uh, operated in the authority of her faith. Get this, her, the authority of her faith where her faith rested in the promises of God. The promises of God are yes or amen and amen. You can rest there in his promises, the full rest. And then you know where the run comes into? It says in the end of that verse, and she tapped in to his faithfulness. So she rested her faith in the miracle working power. She walked in the authority of her faith that was resting in the promises of God. And then she went to work, tapped into his faithfulness. When I say work, where do you get to work? Back to speaking life, using your voice. And when I was uh, younger, or when I was on the radio, I'd always say, uh, thank you, Jesus, for this day. Praise your name all the way. Because it's usually it was at 4, 3.30 or 4.30 in the morning. I was up and I was like, if you know me, I'm not a morning person. So it's just anything I could get out of my voice. But that aligned something in me, even though I was working at a Christian radio station and I had to, no, it just it was my heart. It lined my heart to go into work 
after maybe not that much time in the Word like I do now, lots of time, but I trusted God with the time I had. So we're talking hectic schedules, Mom. I trusted God. It may have been 10 minutes and I wanted an hour, but I knew that God was going to meet me in those 10 minutes. The hum of heaven was going to visit my voice. The hum of heaven was going to visit my heart. Then I could go out to work, which I actually worked at a radio station, so I was using my voice. But yeah. That wasn't the fullness of my identity. It, it took 15 and a half years where I walked away from my voice because my husband's business was so successful that I felt lost. Why? Because my identity was wrapped up in that position. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, our voice, this is what I want to end in because I want you to get to your son's ball game Today, if there was ever a robbery of what's going on, of, of a force, I know we've battled not against flesh and blood, but against the heavenly realms. I think the enemy is, is just like I said, three keys to find your voice when the enemy, when the your emotion screams, shut up. I think the biggest battle is over our voice. Mm -hmm. and, and But I want you to stay in your own lane when you find your voice. But, but what would you say is encouragement to someone to say, ah, oh, no, I'm just, I'm caught up in my drama. I can't speak. Because I know you're an example of someone just moved, lots of stuff going on, but you still rise up. You showed up last night and taught that voice camp. You, you, you got, you know, you got young ones, you got school, but you rise up every morning and use your voice. What could you speak? Could you look into the camera and share with someone who really needs some encouragement in that? Mm -hmm. You know, the first place we start is in our father's arms. And um, and as a mom of three boys, I can tell you my children never had to do anything uh, to earn my love. The very minute that slimy little thing, squirmy little loud baby was put in my arms, my full attention and full affection was on that baby, even before they were put in my arms. The minute I found out that they existed, my full attention and full affection was on them. And the Bible says in Ephesians 1 17, Paul prays and he says, I would that you would know the glorious father. That's the starting place knowing the glorious father that word glorious mm. means heavy and weighted down with everything so good, good. Mm. and when we know the father when we receive from the father then we begin to discover the riches of his inheritance toward us yeah. who believe so and good. when you know that and even as you're just beginning to develop it, even as you're just tapping in, like you said, to his faithfulness, just getting in, you can take baby steps into that. You know, my babies, um, they, they cried a lot when they were babies. They didn't sleep through the night. They pooped in their pants. They did all sorts of things that were very inconvenient to me. Sometimes they embarrassed me by, um, you know, having a little spit up on my shirt and then I wasn't cute anymore. And, so, you know, there are things, but they never lost my full affection and they never lost their place as my son. So and, and when we're in Christ, there's no fear. The Bible says in Christ, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So I yeah. think that's the key is finding our place in, in him Christ. and when yeah. you're in him and you're going towards him the mistakes and the messes are okay the bible says a righteous person falls seven times and they keep getting back up there's grace for for all of that in him his grace is sufficient so i would say do it afraid do it <laughs> trembling good. do yeah. it insecure don't wait till you feel like doing it just simply do it as a simple act of obedience, even if you're not sure. Because even if you fall down, he's right there. He's a good father. So good. So, so. good. I love that. Do it afraid. Or I always say, um, 
oh, I can't remember what I say. Do it. Uh, un, un, imperfect action is better than no action. And yeah, I think sometimes yeah, that's good. what God's causing us is to do is to rise up. Well, you've been listening to Grace Morrison on the Throne Room Voices series. It's all part of our pre-launch with redeemyourvoice.com. Uh, it's a free um, voice, free voice, three videos, just a framework of what really uh, in some short of what the Redeem Your Voice camp is all about. Uh, amazing testimonies of women who've invested in themselves to uh, have a, a result that if, that helps them with their family, with their business. Or I have one member just beautifully coming over for, from some trauma. So uh, just one quick, how important is it to have mentors? You're, you're a mentor. How important is it to have mentors? Uh I, I don't think I would be, I, I can tell you with assurance, I wouldn't be where I am if I didn't have people in my life speaking life into me. Yeah. It is, um, it is as important to your growth as food is to your nourishment on your physical body. Amen. It is yeah. imperative. And just like food, it's important to have good, healthy mentors, not junk food. <laughs> so surrounding yourself with people who will tell you no and will tell yeah. you this is where we need to correct. I remember as a young woman uh, when I was dating my husband, actually, um, and I was in involved in some stuff that I felt convicted of, but I was making really good <laughs> rational reasons for why it was OK for me to be involved uh -huh. with those things. And I didn't say a word to uh, my mentor, not a word, not one peep, and nobody else did either. And she walked up to me one day as we were passing. I was her assistant um, for our our choir, which was about 500 people. So she needed an assistant. <laughs> and um, And so I was walking past her as we were getting ready to start our rehearsal. And she grabbed me in the hallway and looked at me and very directly said, are you doing X, Y, and Z? And I just was floored. And she said, you need to stop and you need to wow. stop right now. Wow. That's, and some, I, that's, some, that's serious. I was so, I, these are the kind of people that I have in my life. And I'm so yeah. grateful for people who are bold enough to call me out even without any tangible evidence to support what the Holy Spirit has said, but are willing yeah. to obey the Lord and speak into my life, whether it's awesome That's and makes good. me feel good or whether it challenges me and points yeah. me into a different direction. That's good. Dave and I always believe uh, as far as uh, being mentors or uh, godmothers or godfathers is really um, – I think when the context of what you're talking about is we're, we're very serious about uh, pulling out the gold from the dirt. Yeah. I'm not saying your teacher didn't do that, but it's it, very serious about our ceiling is your floor. Mm -hmm. We want you to go farther where, where we're going to go than we're going to go. And I have a, I am interviewing someone Friday, Grace, who stayed in the mentor Academy long enough, got some identity teaching and now she's off flying with her business and with her online mentoring. So that's just like, we don't want to capture you at the Redeem Your Voice camp. We want to speak identity, love you, and then boom, see you fly off. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, you got a ball game to get to. And I just got to thank you so much for being a part of this throne room uh, series, Grace. I appreciate your heart. I appreciate that you press on. You have a precious heart. The father is so proud of you. Being a good mom with those boys, but pressing in with all the other situations that you're facing. And I just believe in the suddenlies for you, Grace. I believe okay. God's going to move suddenly, just as you moved into a new place. I believe in yeah. other areas of your life, he's going to move suddenly because he has a plan and the, the enemy's not going to thwart that plan. He's going to yeah. move boulders. He's going to take down walls and he's going to move on your behalf because you, Grace, are his much loved daughter. So thank you. God bless thank you. you. I received that. Thank you for All having right. me. It's an honor. Well, you bet. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Hey, join us tomorrow. It's uh, uh, one of my really good friends from 
Australia. Jody Chadvan's going to come and share her vision. And uh, it's an amazing story in what she's doing now. Jody Chadvan, that'll be tomorrow at 6 p.m. I sure hope you can join us. And I appreciate you. And remember, you ha can have three keys to find your voice when your emotions are screaming, shut up. It's redeemyourvoice.com. Okay, I'll talk to you in the next video. And I really do love you.